Hi everyone, this is Andrew Tai and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be looking at this 27 inch 5K Retina late 2015 iMac. And this particular computer is running very, very slowly and any kind of application or window is taking a long time to boot up. And that's normally because the internal hard drive has some kind of issue. So Apple doesn't really have a very good track record with the Fusion drives that were installed in various iMacs from 2013 onwards. If we look at the storage tab here, we can see how this Fusion drive is arranged. So we have a two terabyte SATA disk here, and um, this particular hard drive is a mechanical drive, which tends to wear out over time. And it's paired with this flash storage here, which is supposed to give some kind of cache storage. So it's uh, able to swap data quickly and take advantage of the fast solid state drive. Um, but also access a large pool of data from the mechanical cheaper hard drive here. But uh, in practice, it doesn't really work very well. You get speeds that are much closer to hard drive speeds than a solid state drive speed, and um, these mechanical drives will eventually fail. So um, that's the case with most of these computers, and um, the kind of solution that is most recommended is to install the solid state drive. So I'm going to be cleaning this data onto this Crucial BX500 solid state drive. So this is a two terabyte solid state drive, and it's going to fit all the data and it's going to run much, much faster. So the first thing that we need to do is to clone our internal data from the Fusion Drive here onto this new solid state drive. The best way to do that is using one of these Sabrent 2.5 inch SATA adapters. So this has a USB cord on one end and a 2.5 inch SATA cable on the other. And all we're going to do is plug it into the solid state drive like so, and we're going to plug this USB cable in the back. So once the crucial solid state drive is attached to the iMac via the SATA adapter, we should have a blue light on there, and that indicates that the solid state drive is attached. What we need to do is to open Disk Utility. So Disk Utility is in the Applications folder under Utilities. What we need to do is go to the external section here, and we can see the Sabrent Media section here. And this has a volume which has not been formatted yet, so what we need to do is select this and select Erase. What I'm going to do is call this the Macintosh SSD. So that allows us to differentiate it from the Macintosh HD, which is the normal naming scheme for this particular drive. And click Erase here. And um, we're going to be formatting it under APFS under the GUID partition map, if that's available. Once the drive is erased, we'll just click Done. And then what I'm going to do is to use an, a free application called Carbon Copy Cloner, which has a free trial. And I've installed it on this computer already. So I'm going to open Carbon Copy Cloner here. I'm going to leave a link in the description for this particular piece of very useful software. And then what I'm going to do is click on this source section here. And I'm going to clone the Macintosh HD data volume here. And then we're going to make the destination the crucial solid state drive that we've just attached. So I'm going to select this Macintosh SSD, which is the drive that we've just formatted, and click there. Here it's asking us whether it has permission to erase the destination volume, and we're going to allow Carbon Copy Cloner to erase the destination volume here. And um, Safety Net will be off, which just means that the destination drive's data will be completely erased. And all we're going to do is plus the clone button, and then we'll be starting our clone. So just wait a bit of time for that to complete. It's going to take um, several hours, probably, depending on how much data you're actually copying over. Um, so just let that run for a while. Obviously, if your hard drive is actually damaged, then it's going to take even longer. Um, but just let that run for as long as it needs to. So as you can see, Carbon Copy Cloner has now completed. This particular copy did 1.31 terabytes of data, and it took nearly seven hours. So it's going to take you a similar amount of time if you're copying this much data, and especially if the hard drive is damaged. So at this stage, all we need to do is just shut down the computer, and then we can continue to the next step. So now that the iMac's turned off, what we're going to do is to look at this Tech Doctor kit. So this particular kit is from the Tech Doctor. I'm going to leave a link to this in the description. And uh, this particular one is called a repair kit. And um, it contains the adhesives here. And it's also got a cutting wheel here, which I'm going to show you now. The main part that we're going to use now is this adhesive cutting wheel. So this particular wheel has um, this kind of uh, plastic blade here, which I'm just going to attach onto this kit there. And it has all these replacement blades too, because we're going to go, be working through a few of these. So what I've done here is I have laid down my iMac flat on the desk, and I'm going to get my cutting wheel and basically cut the adhesive all the way around the edges. Um, and you have to be relatively firm with this. Uh, when you get close to the webcam, it's a good idea to be a bit more gentle. But basically, this length 
allows us to make an adhesive cut that shouldn't damage any uh, of the components inside. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and cut the adhesive through here. So it's just working through the adhesive on the side, which you can kind of hear. We put this down because um, we don't want it to fall once we've cut all the adhesive off. So at this stage, what we need to do is just lift up the actual glass itself now. And uh, as you can see, it's connected still by these two cables, which we're going to disconnect. Uh, so what I tend to do is to place a, a box of some kind in between here. So here we just have a pretty standard display cable here. So there's a little black tab at the top, and then we can just pull out the cable from like so. And here we have a black cable, which we just pull out from like that. So now the actual glass can be removed. So what I tend to do is not actually remove the adhesive here and take it off fully. I just like to rest it back. It's pretty secure in this position. Make sure it doesn't um, fall down completely or fall the other way. And that should be pretty safe and secure. And uh, what we're really interested in is getting into this hard drive. So this hard drive is where the kind of slow data is. We also have a solid state drive that's underneath the logic board, but I'm not going to be removing that today. I'm just going to be replacing this and we're going to be setting the solid state drive as the new boot drive. Now to get to the other screws, we need to remove this speaker. So we just use the same T8 screwdriver to pull these two large screws out. pull the speaker cable out and then um, this kind of just pulls out a little bit so once that's loosened enough um, we don't have to take it fully out I'm just going to remove the the two T8s here as well And then uh, once I've taken out the actual hard drive, I can remove the SATA port. And then this hard drive is now out of the machine. So now what I've done is put the actual 2.5 inch solid state drive that we've cloned the data to. And I put this in this kind of uh, 3.5 inch bracket, which allows to slot this into the correct position. And so it won't rattle around too much. But to be fair, what you could do is also tape this in because solid state drives are so light that um, it won't really move around much and it's not susceptible to hard drive damage in the same way that hard drives are. So it doesn't really matter if it knocks around a little bit, but uh, I'm gonna install this one properly. Um, the thing that we need from the old hard drive are these actual um, little bolts here. So these are still T8s, so I'm just gonna unscrew them and then transfer them onto that drive there so that it'll slot into the sides here. So now that I've got the kind of bolts back in there, what I'm going to do is to take the hard drive and then slot the SATA cable back into this drive. And then once that's ready, we can actually push this into the bracket here, into the two holes that are there. And then we're going to make sure that this side also has the two holes pushed in. and then we can secure the hard drive back into place. So I'm gonna use my T8 screwdriver again and then um, put these screws back in here. So once that solid state drive is in, it's nice and secure, we're gonna put this speaker back into place. It's really just kind of sliding it back under this bracket here, making sure that before we really do anything, that we have the um, speaker cable plugged in and uh, that kind of just slots in. So once that's screwed back in, 
what we can now do is to remove all the adhesives on the side. So in this particular corner, we're just gonna pull these adhesives down because we're gonna put new adhesives on here. So it's a good idea to just clear this out. So I normally use some kind of spudger to help with this. So once you've kind of get one edge, it kind of all pulls off. It just kind of comes off. So the other thing to remember is to also remove the adhesive from the screen as well because there's kind of remnants here too. So just make sure that we clear off everything because we don't want any leftover adhesive because the, uh, the gap between the screen and the computer is not very big and we need to leave as much space for the new adhesive as possible so it's nice and safe. So next stage is to put the new adhesives in. Um, before you do this, I do highly recommend that you reconnect the uh, two monitor cables and make sure that this boots correctly and that the speaker has been inserted correctly because after you put the adhesive in, it's gonna be very, very hard to do that. So just pull this down, attach the two cables in, put a bit of tape on here so that um, the screen doesn't fall, plug the power in and just make sure it's all working correctly before we commit to the next step, which is kind of a more permanent adhesive. So once you've um, tested the iMac and made sure that it's booting correctly and that everything's in the correct place, um, what we need to do is add the new adhesives on. So I'm going to take out the Tech Doctor adhesives now and just show you how this works. It basically starts with 11 like this and then number 12 goes here like this. So it's just handy just to arrange them all. 13 is here. 14 is here, 15 is here, and 16 is here. So we can see the order we've got here. So we've got 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16. So I'm actually not gonna be using 14 and 15 because I don't think it's necessary to break the uh, seal that's on here. So I'm not gonna use these today. And I'm gonna be installing these four um, adhesives. So um, each of these have these kind of blue tabs on them. So it's just a case of removing the tabs on both sides and then aligning them using the kind of guide holes here. Um, so if I show you this one, right, all we have to do is remove these tabs. So I'm just going to remove this number 11 and then the back as well. So just be very careful with this. You don't want it to stick to itself. And then um, what we have are these kind of uh, holes here, which I tend to use a screwdriver to pull down. And then I'm gonna align it with this tiny hole here. So I put my screwdriver in there. And then I'm going to lay down the adhesive like so onto this uh, black strip here. So now that all the adhesives are in, we're just going to lower the screen and then just make sure all the cables are connected. So we just make sure that this one's connected here like so. So plug the cable in. So both cables are in nice and securely. And now we're gonna lower the glass down so I tend to do this last stage um, sitting up so that the weight of the screen is pressing down and that uh, it's nice and tight so that doesn't the glass doesn't go over the top of this. So we just make sure that's all aligned up and now we're just going to press the screen in. So don't skip this part because let's just make sure everything's adhered in. So I've now turned the computer on and it's working way, way, way faster. So everything just boots up very quickly. And as you can see on this screen here, we've got the Macintosh 
SSD and it's showing up as a solid state drive here. I haven't actually had to do anything with the flash storage drive here, which remains empty. Um, it's just going to function normally as a solid state drive and it's booted directly from here without having to change any actual settings. So this particular method is going to allow you to install a solid state drive into this computer. It's gonna run much, much faster than the old Fusion drive. And thankfully it's just working really well. Everything boots up really quickly and all the applications load really fast too. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please like and subscribe. I've got loads of other Mac repair videos and M1 Apple Silicon Mac gaming videos too. If you made use of this video, please leave a comment and I'll see you in the next tech video.